Are you new to D&D? Do you want to channel arcane power without having to learn magic from a book? If you answered yes to both those questions, you're in the right place, because we're learning how to build a D&D sorcerer. Gather your spell components and let's get started. We're making our sorcerer on D&D Beyond, the official free D&D digital toolset that makes it easy to create characters and play the game. Once you've registered for free, click Create a Character to get started. On this next page, we'll select the Standard option so we can build our character step by step. It's helpful so that the stuff on your character sheet doesn't look like gibberish when you play. And click Show Help Text. It's helpful. But if you're short on time and just want to start slinging spells, select Quick Build. Choose your character options and whoops, you're a sorcerer. Let's continue to this character preference screen. Unless your dungeon master has some stuff they'd like you to click or unclick, you can ignore all this weird looking stuff and hit next. We get to make some choices here. For our sorcerer, we're going to choose Tiefling. These devilish folk are perfect for sorcerers because they give you a bonus to charisma, the sorcerer's most important ability. They can also see in the dark thanks to dark vision and can certainly take the heat thanks to their resistance to fire damage. Moving right along to choosing your class and we're just going to assume you still want to play a sorcerer and... Well, hey, hey, <laughs> don't get distracted. You can learn about these other classes in a different video. Select Sorcerer, hit Add Class, and move on to Proficiencies. Like we mentioned, Sorcerers are all about Charisma, so let's take some Proficiencies that will play to our strengths, Persuasion and Intimidation. Let's skip over the Spellcasting toggle for now and move on to our Sorceress Origin. Here's where you get to choose the source of your Sorcerer's innate magical power. We'll choose the Draconic Bloodline which means we've inherited magical powers from a dragon. Because dragons are very cool. We're into them equally as much as we are into dungeons. We also get to choose which type of dragon we inherited our powers from. We're gonna choose red dragon because fire magic is so hot right now. Regardless of the type of dragon we choose, we also get draconic resilience, which gives us some extra hit points and a higher armor class, which makes us harder to hit. Like I said, we're coming back to spellcasting later, so let's move on to ability scores for now. When asked which generation method we're using, select Standard Array. If you're not sure which to use, talk to your DM. If they don't know, decide together. Teamwork makes the dream work. So you may be wondering, what do these ability scores actually do? Strength. Are your punches more powerful than magic? Constitution. How many hits can you take before you need to be healed by magic? Dexterity. Can you avoid magic when it's shot at you? Intelligence. How much do you know about magic? Wisdom. How much can you perceive about the world without using magic? Charisma. Can you convince people without charming them with magic? Sorcerers really rely on their charisma score to cast spells, so this should always be the highest. After that, constitution is important for taking hits and dexterity can help to avoid those hits altogether. The rest can be selected in any order. Click next and let's move on to our character's background. We're going to be choosing the sage background, which gives us proficiency in arcana and history. It helps to know at least a little bit about the magical forces flowing through your veins. We also get to choose two additional languages, if you're not sure what to take, ask your DM what languages it would make sense for your character to know based on their background. If they're not sure, choose whatever sounds cool. We are going with Abyssal, the language of demons, and for fun, Gnomish. Partying with some gnomes just seems fun. Our sage background also gives us the researcher feature, which means if we don't know something, we know where we can find out more about it. Added bonus, you probably know where all the coziest chairs are in all the libraries. Below this stuff, add some detail about your character like appearance and alignment. These details help flesh out your character, but aren't a requirement to get started. Hit next and let's get our gear. When asked to choose between equipment or gold, this isn't a morality test or anything. Equipment means you outfit your character from a pre-selected list of stuff. Gold means you instead buy your own stuff from a pool of gold. Let's go with equipment. 
Sorcerers don't really like using weapons, so choosing between a light crossbow or a simple weapon won't matter much, but seeing as sorcerers generally don't like to be in the thick of it, we'll choose a light crossbow as a backup. We also get to choose between a component pouch and arcane focus. The difference between the two of these isn't important to play, but if you really want me to get nerdy about it, component pouches work with every class, whereas arcane focus only works with specific classes, so if you ever want to get into a different thing, that's really good. Anyway, let's go with an arcane focus. Next, go with a dungeoneer's pack if you'll be dungeoning, or an explorer's pack if you'll be camping. We also get to grab two daggers, just in case, and some extra items from your sage background, including our absolute favorite cryptic item in Dungeons and Dragons. A letter from a dead colleague posing a question you have not yet been able to answer. Hit add starting equipment so we can get started on the reason why we're here. Spells. We've arrived at our character sheet, but something important is missing. There's no way to shoot fire out of our hands. Let's fix that. Head over to Spells and click Manage Spells. Toggle open Add Spells and marvel at the long list of ways we can impose destruction on our enemies. Let's start with cantrips. These are less powerful spells that we can cast without spending any additional resources. We start knowing four of them, but we'll learn more as we level up. To start, we're going to pick our offensive cantrips. Firebolt, because fire and Chill Touch because it sounds pretty chill. Then we'll take Utility Cantrips, Mage Hand and Minor Illusion. Click any spell to find out what it does and how it works. You can see that we also start off knowing the Thaumaturgy Cantrip because of our Tiefling heritage, which is imperative for making a dramatic entrance. There are a lot of options here. Pick what sounds fun. Next, on to first level spells. We start off knowing two spells and can only cast spells using first level spell slots. When we level up, the number of spells we learn and the spell slots we can use increase according to this table. For now, let's pick our two starter spells. Uh, Burning Hands is a pretty obvious first choice by the sound of it, and Magic Missile is one of the most reliable damage dealers around, so let's click Learn next to those two spells. Now, when we click back to the Spells tab on our character sheet, we can see that the spells we chose are there, and we can click Cast to the left of the spell's name, and it will automatically track it on your spell slot counter. These numbers tell you what happens when you cast the spell. Firebolt needs a spell Attack, which we add 5 to because of our Charisma. Let's roll to see if it hits a goblin. Oh, bam! Direct hit! You're toast, goblin. Burning Hands, on the other hand, is an area of effect attack that anyone in the vicinity needs to make a saving throw against. Any creature that succeeds their save takes half damage, and any creature that fails takes full damage. <laughs> oh yeah, feel the burn. And if none of that made sense, just ask your dungeon master, or another player. Never be embarrassed about not understanding a thing the first, second, or third time around. On your character sheet, you can give your character a name, upload a picture, change the style of your sheet, and most importantly, click everything. Need to make a persuasion check? Click. Need to roll for initiative? Click. We hope you have as much fun playing your pyromancer as we did helping to create them. Good luck on your future D&D adventures, and remember, there are very few things a fireball can't solve.